everybody. Good morning. It's Victor again from The Retired Guys. Today I'm going to make, it is Sunday, so today I'm going to make uh, chicken cutlet palm. Very, very easy. Uh, the sauce I already made with meatballs that I have on the side. So uh, in the description of this video, you're going to see the link on how to make the sauce and the meatballs. But for today, we're going to show you how to make chi chicken cutlet palm. So this is what you're going to need for your chicken cutlet palm. So basically, I have about five very thinly sliced chicken cutlets. I like my chicken cutlets very thin. So do I. Some people like them, yeah, so does James. Some people like them a little bit thicker. I like them very thin. That's uh, that's as thin as I like them. So if you like them any thicker, of course, by all means, uh, make them uh, the way you like them. They will take a little bit longer for you to cook them if they're very thick. So, but again, I like for them to be uh, very thin. You're gonna need you're gonna need four eggs. Uh, you're gonna need, need fresh mozzarella. It should be fresh mozzarella that you're gonna put on top of the chicken cutlets when we're getting ready to put them in the oven. This is about ten ounces. One small package is more than enough for the five that we have here. I use plain four C breadcrumbs, and the reason why I use plain as opposed to the ones that are seasoned, I like to season. I like to season my own breadcrumbs because if you buy the ones that are seasoned already, I don't know, when you open it, just smell it for some reason because the cheese and the parsley and all the stuff they have in there, remember, it's been sitting in there since it's been on the shelf. So not to say there's anything bad with it, I the aroma just throws me off. So if I were you, I would just use the plain uh, breadcrumbs or if you're lucky enough to make your own, that's fine. I add my own Parmesan cheese and I add my own oregano. I mean, of parsley. If you have fresh parsley, by all means, use the fresh parsley. Right now, it's really kind of cold out, so it's hard to find fresh parsley. And uh, what I'm going to use is what I have on hand, and I am going to use this uh, that I actually purchased yesterday at Costco's. So basically, this is all you need, and I'm going to show you the sauce. Uh, the sauce I have on the stove already with my meatballs. I made those about two days ago. I'll put the video uh, link below on how to make the meatballs and the sauce, but there's my sauce already made. So, and then you're gonna need a pan, and you're gonna need a pan actually to put them in, to put them in the oven. So let's get started. I'll show you the process on how we make chicken cutlet palm. Okay, so basically what I have down here is I actually have them on uh, a tray. And I pat, I'm wearing gloves because when you're working with chicken cutlets or any kind of chicken, you should wear gloves. Even though you know that I wash my hands constantly, I still like to use gloves when I'm handling chicken. Chicken. So basically what I did was I put them on a tray and I patted them drown, down with paper towels. So I'll just show you. I mean, just get a paper towel. And you just want to pat it down. Get all, Try to get some of the moisture off of them that are on top. Okay, and the next thing you want to do for these is you want to salt and pepper them. So I'm just going to take off one glove. I'm going to leave the other one on so I could work with my chicken. So basically, I'm going to take a little bit of salt. I mean, I'm sorry, we're going to start off with the pepper first. And we're just going to pepper them. And we are going to put pepper in the breadcrumbs, but I like to also add a little bit of extra pepper uh, and a little bit of extra salt to the chicken cutlets before I actually start breading them. So, and this is about a pinch of salt. Just make sure you salt them, you salt everything. Yeah, so throw all the salt on there. Yeah, throw all the salt on there. So these are all ready. So basically what I'm gonna do, I can take my other glove off because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use a fork or we're gonna use tongs. So let's get the uh, breadcrumb mixture together. So let's do that next. These are ready to be breaded. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move them over to this side. And we're gonna move the egg first. Okay, I took the four eggs and I basically just scrambled them. Okay, so as far as the breadcrumbs are concerned, you can just eyeball it. This is probably gonna be about a cup, maybe a little bit more than a cup. Okay. Uh, brand new jar so I just got it so I have to open it this way you think I should have all of this ready prepared, I know seriously prepared before I actually start doing my cooking but I totally forgot yeah, what are you gonna do but like I said if you can get fresh parsley 
by all means use the fresh parsley. So I'm just going to put about a dash. two dashes, two pinches of parsley. And there, I'm going to add a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. You can use Pecorino Romano, but I'm going to put about a half a cup of that in there. I am going to put, like I said before, I'm going to put a pinch of pepper. And I'm going to put a dash of salt. Okay, and basically what we're going to do is we're just going to give this a light mix. The cheese actually gives this... Jimmy loves it with the cheese. Uh, he's never had it before with cheese. And then I, I started making it at home. And I started putting Parmesan cheese in it to give it a little bit of flavor. And let me tell you, I won't make chicken cutlet parm again without putting the cheese in. And the reason why, like I said, like I buy the plain, I like to put my own cheese, my own parsley in because it's fresh. It's not been sitting on a shelf for God knows how long. And the cheese, never the cheese in there... It just gives me a little bit, not that I'm saying that it's bad, but it just gives me a little bit of an odor that I'm not familiar with. This way I know I grated my own cheese and I know my cheese is fresh. So these breadcrumbs are basically ready. And what we're going to do is when we come back, we're going to start breading them. Okay, so we're all set to start breading the chicken cutlets. Like I said, I got my eggs in the back and I got my seasoned breadcrumbs that I seasoned myself. So I did take off my gloves. So I'm not, you know... I wash my hands constantly, it's like, so I'm just going to use my hands in this one. So basically what I like to do is I like to basically just get one in the egg. Does okay. it make a difference if the, if the eggs are in the front or the back? It makes no difference. I rather well, do it in the back. Okay, so there's no, there's no preference. There's no preference, okay. no. Okay, so I leave one in there already. And okay. basically I just take my hands and I just cover it and pat it down. Turn it over. And what's the purpose of patting it down? What is it that? actually, the breadcrumb actually gets embedded into the chicken cutlet. Oh, okay. okay. Which I like. Now, some people will put this back in the egg and actually double bread it. Uh, oh. I just think that's, if you want a thick crust, like a thick kind of uh, coating, then I would recommend you do that. Shake off the extra and put it on your, your baking tray. I'm going to do one more for you. Okay, so you, you do it the modern way. Zip, zip. Zip, zip. All right. I always like to keep one in here while I'm working on the other one. So, so it I absorbs the eggs, right? Right. Don't be afraid to use your fingers, but just remember you're working with chicken, so make sure before you touch any surface in your house or your kitchen that you wash it fit. You wash your hands. So again, just from the bottom, bring your chicken cutlet, uh, bring your seasoning to the top. And we can do it one more time. Up on top. I like to press down. Okay. Shake off the extra. So you can see how thin they are. And that's a perfect yeah, chicken cutlet great. to me. This is the best way for a chicken cutlet, let me tell you. Okay, so when I come back, we'll have the rest of them done. And I'll show you what the next step is. Okay, so my chicken cutlets are all breaded. So I have them all breaded and all ready to go. I also have another pan on the side with... Uh, paper towel on top because when I'm done frying them I like to put them on a paper towel and let them rest for about a minute or so because it also takes away all the grease so on the side here oh I just want to make a little note that I took off one glove to actually bread the chicken cutlets and I actually used the glove that I use my chicken cutlet and I went to reach for the salt and uh, Jimmy uh, mentioned to me that uh, contaminated it so I want you to let you know that I did wash this salt cover, uh, so I got that off also. So remember, when you're dealing with chicken cutlets, wear gloves, try not to touch anything. If you do, make sure you just wash thoroughly when you're done. Okay, so I have a, a frying pan actually heating up some vegetable oil here on the side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my first chicken cutlet and I'm gonna just basically just put that on the side. Okay, so you see it is starting to bubble up a little. I didn't want the heat that high. Try not to make, try not to put the heat, I know that people want to get the oil hot very quickly. Just keep it on medium because the, the oil will get hot. If you put it on high, when you put your chicken cutlets in, it's going to cook so fast that it's going to burn and the inside may not be done. So remember, chicken must be cooked thoroughly. So that's why I started mine off on medium 
and I raised it so it is starting to bubble on the side. I just didn't want it to bubble so much. And then I'm going to put another one in. Scrape off the excess. Now, since these are kind of big, I'm only going to use two chicken cutlets at a time. Going to fry those for about, I want to say, five, five minutes on each side. And uh, then I'm going to take them off, put them on the paper towel, and then I'll put the other two on. And then I have one more left. So, like I said, right now these are starting to cook very, very nicely. So I have a nice simmer on them. I don't have my heat on high. I don't have my oil on high. If you have your oil too high, this will burn. The outside will cook very dark, and, the in and you'll be afraid. You'll start seeing that it's getting dark, and you're going to want to turn it over. It's not going to be done. Leave them alone. Don't move them around. Just let them cook. When we come back, hopefully all five of them will be done, and I'll show you what the next one. Oh, just so you know, I have my sauce heating up in the back as well. Okay, so we have that going too. So, There's a link to that sauce. And there will be a link on the description on how to make the sauce with meatballs. They're together. But I took the meatballs out of this because I just want just the sauce. We're not going to have meatballs today. We're going to have chicken cutlet palm, and we're going to have a little bit of pasta on the side. So when we come back, all of these should be done. Okay, so the first two are ready to turn over. So we're going to turn these over. And we have a nice, a nice golden sear on one side. And not and burnt. And not burnt at all. So we're going to cook these on this side for about five minutes, and these are done. That's the reason why I like cooking chicken cutlet palm. I like using the thin chicken cutlets. They, I know they're going to cook through and through. Uh, I don't like to chew on a thick piece of chicken cutlet. Some people do like a fat chicken cutlet. It's going to take a long time to cook. The outside may brown too much before the inside is done. That's why you must keep your oil regulated. You don't put your oil on high, keep it on low to medium. The heat of the oil will be consistent and it will cook thoroughly. But like I said, cook the chicken cutlets the way you like. If you like a thick chicken cutlet, that's fine. I just prefer a thin chicken cutlet. They cook very quickly and they cook evenly through and through. So these will be done in about two minutes and we'll put the other batch in. But you should try thin one time. You should try thin. If you've never had a thin chicken cutlet, and you know, you can ask your butcher, to actually cut them thin, or you can buy them thin. I actually buy uh, basically thick chicken cutlet, chicken breast. I buy two or three in a pack, and they're about that thick. And my father used to be a butcher, so my father taught me how to cut meat. So basically what I do out of one, if there are three thick chicken breasts in one pack, there are three of them, out of those three chicken breasts, I can get anywhere between nine to 12 chicken cutlets, nice and thin. I freeze some. I put about four, I cook for me and Jimmy because we could probably polish about two away. But if you can cut your own, it's very easy to cut. I'm going to do a video when I have thick chicken cutlets and I'll show you how I slice them nice and thin. But right now, I actually purchased these already thin. So these are about done. When we come back, I'll show you what the rest are. Okay, so my chicken cutlets are done. You can see down here, I have them warming. I had them warming on a tray for a while. Most of the grease, if you can see the paper towel, soaked up a lot of the excess grease. That are cooling. I had them cooling and I wanted the extra oil because I don't like an oily chicken cutlet. Uh, I have my fresh mozzarella and I grated about a half a cup, maybe a quarter of a cup, but you can use more. Uh, depends on how much cheese you like uh, of grated Parmesan cheese. Do not salt and pepper these because remember we put salt and pepper on the chicken cutlet. We also put salt and pepper in the breadcrumb, and there's a lot of salt inside the Parmesan cheese, and there is salt inside the mozzarella. So at the dinner table, if you feel you need more salt, that's when you can add salt to your own individual dish. Can't take it out. You can't take it out. Now we're gonna to start to assemble. I'm using a cookie tray. Basically, this is good to make chicken cutlets with also, because the thinner the tray is, the more heat that will come above the tray and actually cook the chicken cutlet really, yes. really nicely yes. and melt that mozzarella cheese. And also to tell if your chicken is actually done, internal temperature should be about 165. And that's if you have a, a heating thermometer, I have two. I have a portable one here that I check to see if it's, uh, if it's cooked properly. I also have one that goes inside the stove 
which is this one here it, it, internally, and the outside stays outside the stove. So you can check. These items I purchased on Amazon. If you like, I'll put those in the link also below. So basically how I start my chicken cutlet is I have my sauce that's warmed. Okay, it doesn't have to be warmed. I like to warm up my sauce. So basically I'm just going to start off by taking a little bit of sauce and I'm going to put it on the bottom of my cookie tray. And I'm going to basically just spread it around. Like making a pizza. Like you're making a pizza. 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 Oh, I should do pizza one you day. You should, you really you should. I don't think is I gotta buy a stone. So I had a stone, though. We had a stone. I had a stone. stone and unfortunately my stone broke. So that's why I decided not to make pizza. So this is all you need for the bottom. Okay. And then what you want to do is you want to take your chicken cutlet and just put them in the exact same. I, I have two of the exact same trays. So I'm just basically go, going to place them exactly the same way. Okay, so. Okay, so the next step, we're going to get rid of this. The next step you can do is, I like to put a little bit of sauce on some of them. Just top them off with some sauce. take out thinly sliced. Please do not use the mozzarella that you have already shredded in a bag. Just go out and buy fresh mozzarella. It makes a world of a difference. So now we're just going to place these on top. I mean, I'm probably going to add more, but I just want to make sure I have it fully covered. You can cut the mozzarella any way you like. I cut them in small pieces like this so I could Okay, so this will go for another piece in the end. This can go for a piece here. This can go for a piece. Let's do a double piece here. Let's do a nice piece here. And we have one big piece that we have left here. And then we have this extra piece where, if you notice, the extra pieces are for you to eat and your cameraman to eat. There you go. Okay. The next thing is we're going to top this with a little bit of grated Parmesan. Which I don't like, but it's surprising. He like doesn't like yet. the Parmesan, but believe it or not, in the in the chicken cutlet, it's a must. You need to have fresh Parmesan. And it melts anyway, so you really don't Okay. Okay, so that's how you make chicken cutlet palm. Now, some people will cover this with aluminum foil and bake it in the oven. I don't like it covered. I like my cheese to be nice and melted. Remember, the chicken cutlets are already cooked. What we're doing in the oven is we're melting the cheese, we're melting the, the Parmesan cheese, and we're heating up the sauce. The chicken cutlets are not being cooked. Well, they will be cooked, but they're already cooked, so we don't have to worry. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put them in a 350 degree oven and we're going to cook them anywhere between 25 to 30 minutes or until you see that all that mozzarella has actually been melted on top. So when we come back, I'll be taking this out of the oven. Okay, so the chicken cutlets are done and this is what they look like and they came out perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plate one up. Take this guy here. 
And we're just gonna put him in the center. It looks so good. It looks delicious. And since I'm gonna be the one to taste this, I'm just gonna add a little bit of extra Pecorino Romano. Okay, and we're gonna give this a little bit of a taste. Get some of that cheese. Okay, and let's give it a shot. The chicken cutlet is so moist. It's so tender. I can taste, doesn't need any salt, thank God. Uh, I can taste the Parmesan, I can taste the mozzarella. Uh, the sauce is absolutely delicious. In the link below, I'm gonna show you the recipe on how I actually made the sauce, but I'm actually gonna go in for a second little piece here because this is actually that good. So, Eat without me, go ahead. That is absolutely delicious. Five chicken cutlets took me literally about as long as it took to cook. Anyway, between 25 to 45 minutes is the prep time, cooking them, frying them. Make your own breadcrumb, use the plain, add your own cheese, add your own parsley, salt and pepper. Don't buy the breadcrumb that has it already flavored. I would stay away from that. Uh, yeah, and make this recipe. It's absolutely delicious. We're going to throw on some pasta, and this is going to be for our dinner for tonight. So enjoy the recipe. And like I say at the end of all my videos, take care of one another. Peace out.